It's time for exciting live and local sports action on Richmond's very own WBON-TV, the leader in local sports television. Watch live on your big screen with the WBON-TV Roku channel or by streaming the live player at WBONTV.com. And support these great local sponsors who support our community. Now, here's your announcers for the game. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to Madison Central High School. We're on the campus here of the high school, and we've got a softball game coming up for you here tonight on WBON-TV as we uh, try to round out the regular season, trying to get as many of these games as we can to close out the year with, you know, some of these teams not being able to play on their home fields for most of the year. A lot of games we've had being scheduled uh, being rained out at points throughout the season, but we're here tonight, and Madison Central, the softball team, coming in as one of the best teams in the state of Kentucky right now. The Lady Indians are ranked as the top team in the 11th region with a RPI of 68237. They come in with a 17-3 and record, and tonight looking to, to knock off another 11th region opponent in Great Crossing, who comes in with an RPI of 5-6-9-0-5. Lady Warhawks are 12-11 and 11 on the season. And coming into the night, into 11th region play, they are 6-3. and three. And those three losses have come at the hands of Lafayette, twice in Scott County. So Madison Central coming in tonight. They're 4-0 in the 11th region play. Where there's four wins coming against. They beat Scott County 5-2 back in the very first game of the season. They've knocked off uh, Tate's Creek 6-3 last week, Madison Southern, and also have a win over Franklin County. So those are the four wins in the 11th region for Madison Central. And they'll look to get another one here tonight at home as they take on the Lady Warhawks of Great Crossing. Looking at the lineups for these two teams for tonight, the visiting team that will be on the uh, – or in the – Plate first, or in the uh, batter's box, will be up to bat first this uh, this evening. We'll have the Lady Warhawks with Sullivan leading off, playing short. Lukadu batting second, playing third base. Holbrook in left field, batting third. Ward behind the plate, the cleanup batter. Clay will be in right field, batting fifth. Miller at second base, batting sixth. Ogle, the pitcher on the mound, will bat seventh, followed up by Reed at first base, batting eighth, and Livingston batting ninth. For Madison Central, Kaler is on the mound tonight for the Lady Indians. What a great season she has had. Kaler this year, Jasmine Kaler in 10 starts, uh, should be in nine starts, 58 in the third innings pitch. She's only given up 19 earned runs, an ERA of 2.28 for the Madison Central pitcher. She will get the mound tonight, and behind the plate will be Natalie Ison for her. From third to first, we'll have Gildall at third base at shortstop Olivia Metcalf at second base Haley Sebastian and Hannah Eisen at first. And then we'll have Cassidy Hack, uh, Michaela Morin, and Shelby Hensley in the outfield for the Lady Indians. Step aside for a quick commercial break, and we'll come back for first pitch here at Madison Central High School. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Espoo County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shandawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Let's get physical, physical. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. What does in transit mean? When you see that on our website at jackburford.com, it means your favorite Chevy is on the way. Call us at 859-623-3350 to reserve it, and we'll keep you updated throughout the entire process. See, it's that easy. Reserve your new Chevy today at jackburford.com. Your vehicle is now in transit. As long as I'm 
Jake from State Farm. I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. Consider us square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here tonight on WBON-TV as we bring you softball action on the airway between Madison Central and Great Crossing. 11th region foes squaring off against one another this evening. And it's been a, uh, a fun night already and, an, and a, a very emotional night. They had a ceremony for a parent that uh, passed away last week before uh, the first pitch here tonight. And also it's Cystic Fibrosis Night here as we are uh, honoring kind of Cystic Fibrosis Month and just kind of trying to raise awareness for what that is. Uh, former player Amber Moore battles cystic fibrosis every day, but doesn't let it stop her from dancing through life. And they had a very, uh, very nice ceremony before the game this evening. And you can see the team out there wearing their purple socks and purple uh, bows in their hair as they, again, try to raise awareness to cystic fibrosis and doing a great job of here. And Amber Moore graduated, I think, two years ago. She was a member of the softball team, and they kind of started this tradition with her as a member of the team, raising awareness for it, and her and her family coming back and uh, giving the spiel going throughout the uh, the uh, just the definition of what CF is. And uh, we'll get this game started with Sullivan on the uh, – I mean, leading off for Great Crossing on the mound is Kaler from Addison Central. Sullivan – Batting 471 this year leads the team in hits with 33, and she'll step in for the first pitch of the ball game as Kayla rears back. And the first pitch, ball one. Glad to have you along here on WBON. Michael Watkins uh, on the call for you. We'll have some former Madison Central players coming on with us throughout the evening. As that pitch taken... For strike one, it's a ball and a strike to Sullivan. That's a strike two call. And Kaler pitching well here in the first batter she sees. A one ball, two strike count. Let's see if she can finish her off. Up next is Lukadu for the Lady Warhawks. As the one-two pitch from Kaler is taken up high and makes the count even. Two balls, two strikes. This Madison Central team was undefeated for so long. They've actually lost two of their last four games, two and two in their last four. Great Crossing has that same record in their last four games. This one's heading in our direction. It'll get foul and keep the count even to two balls, two strikes. Kaler gets the sign. Randy Hall, the pitcher, his first season as the Madison Central head coach. That pitch below the knees, and we got a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Here as Sullivan leading things off for the Lady Warhawks of Great Crossing, trying to get the leadoff batter aboard. And the payoff pitch hit right through up the middle, right up the gut into center field. More and we'll get it in quickly, but a leadoff single and a great at bat by Sullivan to get aboard. So to bring up Lukadu. Got a runner on base for the third baseman from Great Crossing. Look at who this season, just 13 hits in 38 at-bats, batting 342 on the year. And she'll take a first pitch out of the zone for ball one. Continuing to try to improve the facilities here at Madison Central. You can see kind of above the great crossing dugout as a stolen base attempt. And out! What a throw down from the catcher. Ison from behind home plate in a great tag. Check out the replay here as the throw down is going to be in time to get her. Great tag applied by Metcalf. So that's one out in the inning. And still at the plate is Lukadu with a 2-0 count. Kaler the pitch, and that one's a called strike at the knees. 2-1 and one now to the third baseman from Great Crossing. We 
One out in the inning. Two balls and a strike to Lukadu. Kaler gets the sign to swing through in the pitch. Didn't miss by much, but she did miss. It's now three and one. Dawson Rule running camera up top here for us. Gage Hill, our producer this evening. Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. And outside, ball four, and Kaler has allowed the first two base runners aboard against Great Crossing here in the early going. Brings up Ashton Holbrook. The second most hits and second highest average on the team for Great Crossing. Holbrook has also knocked out a pair of home runs. This one, first pitch, is going to get foul. Almost playable from Ison and Sebastian on that right side of the infield, but couldn't get to it in time, so it's going to be 0-1. No balls and a strike. Madison Central, the top-ranked team in the 11th region, looking to knock off one of the teams in the middle of the pack this evening and try to keep their undefeated streak against 11th region teams alive. Runner takes off and a swing and a miss, a hit and run, and they're going to say a foul ball. So fouled off the bat of Holbrook on the hit and run play call. We'll have to send the runner back to first, and it's now quickly 0-2 to the left fielder from Great Crossing, Ashton Holbrook. Grounder over to second, Sebastian to Metcalf for one on the throw to Ison, just a little bit too far above her, kind of off the tip of her glove, and the double play null and void, but they get the fielder's choice, and the leadoff runner out at second base. So that puts two outs on the board for the catcher, Ward. Bianca this year just batting 241 on the season for Greg Crossing. First pitch up high at the letters and a 1-0 count. One ball, no strikes. Kaler. And a big swing and a miss from Ward as she tried to rip one through. And a nice pitch by Kaler to even this count up. One ball, one strike. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. This one's fouled back behind home plate. And Kaler has once again taken the lead against a batter. It's 1-2 and two against the catcher Ward from Great Crossing. Two outs in the inning, one runner on. After Sullivan singled the left center field, she was then thrown out at second on a stolen base attempt. Luca Du got aboard on the walk, and then Holbrook grounds into a fielder's choice. Kaler says, I'll take care of the rest. A strikeout to Ward to end the inning. Lady Indians let a couple of base runners get on, but they get away with it as they go to the bottom of the first. Scoreless on WBON-TV. Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy will help guide you on your road to recovery. It is our mindset, a spirit driven to excellence, to help people heal faster and better. If you have pain or an injury or you need experts in sports medicine, Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy is your best choice in rehabilitation and you have direct access. In most cases, you do not need a referral to any of our seven locations serving the region. Just give OSPTKY a call. Visit our website at OSPTKY.com to find the location nearest you. The constant changing of the weather in Kentucky can put a strain on your heating and cooling system. It's times like these when it's good to have someone on your side 24-7. That's Madison HVAC. No matter what you need, Madison HVAC is there from standard heating and air services, indoor air quality, or commercial refrigeration. You can rest easy knowing you're getting the best there is with Madison HVAC. Financing options available. Visit MadisonHVACR.com to learn more or call 859-625-1471. Back on WBON TV, Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night. Absolutely perfect weather outside this evening. It's supposed to be this way all week long, which is fingers crossed good for softball and baseball action. As they try to wrap up the regular season for baseball, district tournament will begin next Monday, and then the uh, championships will be on Tuesday night next week. And then following that, 
we will have a softball tournament the following Monday and Tuesday. So uh, a lot of postseason baseball and softball should be coming your way in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, WBON-TV will have election results on next Tuesday night as well. So a busy time here as we bring you all kinds of your local programming on WBON-TV, where every local story starts here. So Madison Central comes to bat with a scoreless top of the first. They'll send Michaela Morin up to lead things off, followed up by Hack and Ison, the one, two, three, and then Kaler, the pitcher, will bat fourth in the cleanup spot. Morin digs in, the first pitch she sees. Taken outside, ball one. It's Morin, Hack, Ison, that's Hannah Ison, the pitcher, Kaler. Speakman batting fifth, Sebastian sixth, Metcalf seven, and then eight is Hensley, and then Natalie Eisen to round out the lineup for Madison Central. Morin tried the running bun attempt, pulled it back, and the count now 2-0 and oh as that pitch was up high. Get a good shot here from atop the press box at Madison Central's football field. That one's grounded foul. Tell you why Dawson Rule does a tremendous job for us, whether it's running camera, whether it's washing the vehicles or sweeping the floors, being on the call. I mean, Dawson can do it all for us. We've been a great addition to the staff at WBON. Two balls, one strike, the count. As Ogle sets and delivers a pitch that is going to hit her. Hit by pitch, and Michaela Bourne aboard to give Madison Central their leadoff runner on base. Of course, Dawson Roll, a former Madison Central Indian. He graduated from Central in, I think, 2019, 2018? 18. He's getting O'Donnell's, folks. So with more and aboard, that brings up Hack. Cassidy, the left fielder. First pitch she sees, hits her in the left elbow. Back-to-back, -back, hit by pitches for Madison Central. That's what they call taking one for the team. Hack appears to be okay. That one hit her right on the stinger, right on the elbow, right above uh, that left elbow, kind of in between the, the shoulder and the elbow there. No protective gear on the elbow. She does have an arm sleeve on, but that won't help you if you get hit right there where the funny bone is. Morin chased back to second base. So two on with Morin and Hack aboard, and Hannah Eisen digging in the first baseman. Had a lot of power last season, did Eisen. Talked to her before the game. She said, I don't have as much power. I don't have as many home runs as I did last year. But she's still been a huge piece of the team here at Madison Central and what they've been able to do here this season after that 17-3 and start. 1-0 count to Eisen. And with 23 hits on the season, make it 24 as that one will fall out of the glove of the center fielder. Throw down to third is going to be in time to get more and so close. But the hang-up for Moore in there was she had to stay at second base. Check out the replay here. We'll see Eisen's hard hit ball in the left center field. And I think they are going to count that as a base hit because that was great hustle by the center fielder. The diving effort just couldn't get a hold on it. Of course, the pole is right there in the way. Then the throw down is just in time to get the runner at third. So still two on. One out now for the pitcher, Kaler. Jasmine this year, betting 326 on the season. Tries to square around a bunt, couldn't get it down. If Madison Central could lay one down here, everybody is coming up except for the second baseman. If Kaler could beat one out, maybe have a chance to load the bases up for Speakman, the designated player. 0-1 oh the count. Kaler trying to help herself out. She's the pitcher for Madison Central. Let's the pitch go by, and it's taken for a ball out of the zone, a ball and a strike.
Kato this season, 12 RBI on the year. She'll pop one up here into center field. Playable and caught by the center fielder Livingston for out number two. That'll bring up Carly Speakman. Speakman, the designated player, does not play in the field. She is batting for the third baseman, Gildalt. A chance to do some damage here with two on, but there are two out. First pitch bounces up into the glove of the catcher out of the zone ball one. Central got the first two aboard, both Morin and Hack taking the, the uh, softball to the body, a body blow, a hit by pitch, putting both aboard. Now it's 1-0 and to Speakman. That's a called strike in the count even, 1-1. One, one. Clay Miller and Ogle, the 5-6-7 part of the order due up for great crossing in the top of the second inning. Ogle gets the sign and the pitch. Speakman follows it all the way into the glove of the catcher and takes ball two. It's now two and one. Madison Central dugout coming to life, making some noise. Here's a pitch. Speakman takes strike two, count back to even. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. In the bottom half of the first here on WBON-TV. Here's a pitch to Speakman. She'll rip one through and past the first baseman. Right fielder can't handle it, and they're going to score two. Speakman will round first and head for second. They're going to wave her over to third and now send her back as Speakman probably could have made it over to third base. Check out the replay. A hard hit ball right to the first baseman. She couldn't handle it. It's mishandled by the right fielder, allowing two runs to score and a two RBI double for Speakman. So Madison Central strikes first. Looks as if we're going to have a courtesy runner, I believe. We will have a courtesy runner coming in for Speakman. Now it's Haley Sebastian. 13 RBI on the year for Sebastian, who's batting 349. Only struck out seven times this season. See if she can get aboard here. Maybe add another run on to the total for Madison Central here in the first. First pitch taken for a strike for Sebastian, who's been really good for a few years now. She was a big piece of that Madison Central team last year that had a good season. Skylar Jacob and Hannah Eisen hitting all those home runs last season. This pitch fouled off by Haley, and it'll be an 0 and 2 count. Sebastian, 22 hits, five of those for doubles. And a chance for an RBI if she can get one into the gap. Let's it go by below the knees, and the second baseman for Madison Central sees the count now jump to 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes. The one, two. Sebastian takes. That's a good eye as that one was really close. And the count now even. Two balls, two strikes. Madison Central, two. Great crossing scoreless here in the bottom of the first. Twos across the board once again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Sebastian out in front of it, grounds it back to the pitcher. Ogle will field it and throw it over in time for out number three, but the Lady Indians on the board first. A two RBI double by Speakman makes it 2 nothing. Madison Central as we head to the second inning on WBON-TV. Looking for some fun? The Galaxy Bowling Center has a league for you. No matter your skill level, you can come out, make some new friends, and have a great time. Call 624-4444 for details. Or if you're more of a trivia person, 
Champions Grill has you covered every Tuesday starting at 7 with great prizes and all-you-can-eat wings for only $19.99. Why go anywhere else? The Galaxy Bowling Center and Champions Grill. Your ticket to fun just off I-75, exit 87 in Richmond. Hometown Dental prides themselves on being on the cutting edge of the latest dentistry technology. In a time where safety and their customers' well-being is of the highest importance, Hometown Dental is taking every precaution necessary, like by allowing patients to fill out their paperwork online before coming in for their first visit. Visit HometownDentalRichmond.com to see what sets Hometown Dental apart from the rest. They accept most insurances and want you to know they are here to help. Hometown Dental on Atwood Drive in Richmond or visit their offices in Stanford and in Lancaster. It's Madison Central with a 2 nothing lead as we head to the second inning with Clay Miller and Ogle, the 5, 6, and 7 part of the order coming up for the Lady Warhawks here on WBON TV. Glad you are joining us on this Monday night. No sports show tonight. We appreciate Jack Burford uh, and the sports show sponsors Richmond Raceway, the law office of Patrick O'Neill, uh, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction, Nuevo Vallarta. And all the folks, Bluegrass, uh, excuse me, Bishop Small Engine Repair as well, who allow us to bring you local sports coverage on the sports show every Monday night. We'll be back in action uh, in a few weeks. We'll have the uh, hopefully have baseball and softball uh, first round action coming up for you in the next couple of Mondays. But we'll have uh, the sports show specials uh, following those in the next couple of weeks. Hard hit ball into right center field, and just like that. Clay from Great Crossing has cut this 2-0 deficit in half with a solo home run to right center field, almost straightaway center. Some power displayed there by Clay as she hits the home run. It's her fourth home run of the season as she ties Lukadu for the most home runs on the team. Kaylor just put one over the middle, and uh, Clay knew what to do with it. A solo shot, and the score now 2-1 to one, Madison Central. Brings up the second baseman, Miller. Brooke Miller on the year, a 302 average. First pitch, she takes ball one. Kaylor with a little shade over top of her because of the foul pole here in left field. Another pitch out of the zone. It's 2-0. and oh. Nope, scratch that. That one was taken for a strike, so it's a ball and a strike. Now 2-1 and one is that one out of the zone as well. Kaylor trying to Settle down here and get some outs. Keep this one run depth, uh, one run lead intact. That one swung on and missed, and a nice pitch there as she brought the heat. And the count now two two. Two two the count. Kaler rears back and delivers, and a swing and a miss for strike three as Miller goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. That will bring up Lane Ogle, the pitcher for Great Crossing. Ogle this year, 16 hits. She's driven in 18 runs. Also sitting there with a 302 average. First pitch to Ogle, a call strike one as she battles that out against Kaler for Madison Center. A pitcher's duel, if you will. The 0-1, Kaler, the wind-up and the pitch. Strike two. The count now 0-2. Kaler gets the sign and the quick delivery. He is taken up high above the letters. That'll be the first ball of the A-B. 1-2, and two, the count to Ogle. Reed in the on-deck circle for great crossing. Bases empty, one out, and a solo home run by Clay to get this inning started. 
That pitch up high as well. Count now two and two. Kaler. A little hard ground ball from off the bat of Lane. Ogle and right into the glove of the third baseman Gildall. A nice throw over. Ison completes the 5-3 put out. That'll bring up Destiny Reed, the first baseman, with two outs in the inning. Base is still empty. Kaler trying to get her third out and get out of this inning. A first pitch pop up into left field and backing up to make the play is Hack to end the inning. A quick inning, but still a solo home run. Cuts the lead in half for Great Crossing as they now trail it 2-1 to one off the bat. Of the right fielder, Clay, a solo shot to right center field. Lady Indians still lead. It's 2-1 after the top half of the second inning. We'll step aside and come back on WBON-TV. Citizens Guarantee Bank makes banking on the go a breeze. Banking on the go has never been easier with options like balance inquiries, make payments from any mobile device, transfer funds between accounts, activate or deactivate a card with just a tap. And with mobile checking deposit, you can deposit checks straight into your eligible checking account using your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Take advantage of all these fast, convenient, and secure services of Citizens Guarantee Bank. Mobile carrier charges and rules and restrictions may apply. See bank for details. Citizens Guarantee Bank member FDIC. Equal housing plan. Can you get into your doctor's office the day you call? The best medical practitioner is there when you need them. At White House Clinics, all patients get easy VIP access to exceptional care. Right now, White House physicians are accepting new patients in Jackson, Madison, Estill, Rockcastle, and Garrett counties. Go to whitehouseclinics.com or one of our nine state-of-the-art facilities to request a new patient appointment. Back here on WBON-TV, Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night as we've got softball action on the airwaves and appreciate you joining us here as Madison Central with a 2-1 lead heading into the bottom half of the second inning. and We had a solo home run there in the... Uh, top of the second by Clay from Great Crossing, and I'm about to be joined by a player who is no stranger to hitting some bombs. Uh, Skyler Jacob about to join us here on the broadcast. As we've got Metcalf at the plate for Madison Center. Well, have you put this on? I can't hear you if you don't put that on. There we go. So it's a 2-1 lead, Lady Indians. Skyler joining us here on the broadcast. Back in town for... For how, how, but what's going on? What we're back in town for? Base softball season already over? Yeah, so I was committed to Tusculum, and I actually decommitted from there. So I was at Western for that year, and so that was good, but I'm actually transferring to play next semester. So, so. what are we going to next year? Um, I have a couple of schools right now. Oh, we haven't now. got it announced yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm talking to a lot of schools. I have a visit tomorrow. I'm going to go work out with the team. So. Okay. Well, good deal. So, have you missed playing softball for sure? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I've missed it for sure. Not playing softball is just something I don't want to do. And I've played for so long, it's weird just not playing. So, you said you decommitted from Tusculum. Tusculum. Uh, uh, do you have. And I, so how, how did they do this year? If you didn't you didn't go down there, did you pay attention to the season at all? Um, yeah, they did pretty good. They didn't do as good as they were last year. Last year they were SAC champs, but okay, this yeah. year they weren't. But they still did pretty good. So how's school been like for you if you're not playing softball? More time to focus on studying, yeah. obviously. So it's been good. Um, like you said, all I've been doing is studying and just now, hanging out listen, with friends. You, <laughs> you don't have to lie to us. Not all you've been doing is studying. Uh, but I'm sure Mom would like to hear that, so we'll, yeah, we'll let you yeah. we'll let you get away with that here on the call tonight. <laughs> We've got this one coming right at us. Gage, look alive! <laughs> look at that, man. We need a glove. Where's Where's Hack? At? Where's my glove at? <laughs> that was a horrible. I tried to swipe at it and everything. And listen, you're the softball player. <laughs> know, you just I got love. up. I said bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect aim, though. That was coming literally. In the line of duty. We got a shot of that? Yeah, that's Shelby. That's Shelby's yeah. fault. And I'll and I tell you what happened. I interviewed Bailey last week, and I didn't interview her, and that's why she's mad. She's trying to get back <laughs> at us here. That one's hit hard in the right center. Center fielder coming up to make that play. So Metcalf still hanging that over at first. How did she get on? Did you see that? I was talking Metcalf, to you. Metcalf, no, I didn't see All that. All right. 
<laughs> Bart Nicholson said, I hope that camera was on you when you tried to – that was horrible, man. I mean, I don't know what I was even trying to – that's why I didn't play baseball, folks. Do we have a shot out of – was Gage trying to find it here for us? That was a perfectly placed ball right up here at us. Yeah, that's the batter coming to the plate now is Ison, the catcher, one of your former teammates. Now, mm -hmm. I talked to Hannah before the game. Now, last year you and her were both hitting dingers left and right. She's not had this, that much success this year hitting home runs, still the team having a ton of success. And why do you think that, that maybe Hannah's not hitting the same with the same power that she did last year? Um, I think Hannah's just going through a little slump. But last year, I mean, we've played together for like – since 10U or 8U, something like that. So last year, we we um, depended a lot on each other. So, like, maybe her not having that this year is just a little different. But um, we're, like, partners in crime. Like, if she messed up, I would be the one to be like, Hannah, like, come on. <laughs> like, you're doing awful. And she would do the same to me. And so I feel like her not having that this year just because we've been together for so long is just a little different. Yeah, I remember interviewing all, you, all, you two last year with Haley and – you all could tell you just had a, a really good bond yeah. with each other. And you were, I think you were the only senior to graduate last year. So this is pretty much the same team that was out there last season. Mm -hmm. And the success is cr – the, the changeover is, is crazy. I mean, you know you had a great season last year, but the team this year seems to really be, be clicking from the top of the order to the bottom of the order. What do you think that is – what do you think has really been the difference with this year's team? Well, um, yeah, they're actually so successful this year. They're actually ranked in the state, yeah. like top five in the state. Their record's like – 17 and 3. There you um, go. I think a big change is just the coaches overall, just because these coaches make sure if there's drama, you're going to fix it. If, like, like I said, drama, they do team bonding besides softball, but these, they aren't only coaches, they're like the girls' friends, so I think that helps a lot. I mean, you have to balance that out. Yeah. But, um, these coaches are very understanding. They've coached for years before. There's my dad on third. <laughs> He's coaching this year. He's a third base well, coach. Well, I thought your mom told me that he was – now, do you have a little sister on the team? or no, is he I just don't. Okay, okay. Um, I wanted him. He wanted to coach me, like, um, throughout – because I was here for six years. Yeah. But, like, he didn't have the opportunity. But um, he got a new job and everything, and he was debating on coaching. And I'm like, Dad, just do it. Like – He's probably – I know it's like my dad, but he's probably one of the best coaches that I've ever been coached by. Well, you did pretty good. So, obviously, if he helped coach <laughs> you, he was doing something well. I give him all the credit. Everything I know is because of him, and he's too good. He has a talent of coaching, and it doesn't need to go to waste. So, when you talk, so you're, right now you got some free time. You, you've said you've got a few schools that you're looking at. Can you talk about the list of schools that you have, or are you trying to keep that a secret for right now? Um, it's kind of a secret. Okay, that's all right. That's but, all right. yeah, I have um, schools from D1, D2, and JUCO right wow, now. Wow, okay. Yeah. So what what would be the deciding factor as this one's hit hard into center field and another dropped ball in center field as Metcalf will round second and head for third and Madison Central with a pair of runners in scoring position as Morin gets on with the two-out double. You want to give that an error right there? I'm going to let you decide. Is that an yeah, error? Yeah, that's okay. an error. Okay, <laughs> right, E8 right there in center field. Um, to answer your question, it's like obviously my parents take care of the money aspect, but um, for me it just depends. Um, like I'll play anywhere. If a coach wants me to play outfield, I'll play outfield even though I don't play that. But um, it depends on the relationship with the coach and the girls and how much playing time that I'll have. Just because you go to – a big D1 school or anything, but you're going to be on the bench the whole time. I'm not going to want to waste my talent and just be on the bench the whole time. So I want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to play and be successful. So I, I didn't know you had decommitted. committed. Can you talk about that and, and kind of the reason behind that? We just want to take a year off or just didn't like the situation there? Um, so at Tusculum, there was a coaching change, and um, there was just some drama going on, and I felt like I, I – me and my mom actually drove down there one day, and I felt like um, I, it, this isn't really my place. I shouldn't be here. And I was like, at that point, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of done with softball. I was so wore out. I was like, maybe taking – like, I, at this time, I was done with softball. Yeah. Like, I was like, I'm, I'm done with it. But um, taking that year off, I think, really helped me, obviously. I've been working out every day since I've been back with Dad to get myself back in shape. And every time we work out, I'm like – Jeez, this is harder than I thought <laughs> just to get back to where I was. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm I'm glad I decommitted because there's I have um, better opportunities now since I did that, which is surprising just because I did take that year off. 
But um, when these coaches reached out to me and I reached out to them, they saw my stats from last year. They've seen videos and they're like, okay, let's give this girl a shot. So when I go on these visits and work out with the team, I'll just show them what I have and just see what they offer. It's so right there while we were while we were talking, another air on the center fielder, back-to-back -back airs. Mm -hmm. That time two runs come across to score, and it's now a 4-1 lead. Madison Central taking advantage of the mistakes made by the great crossing defense. You know, when you were here last year, the team success wasn't as good, and you know this one's hit hard over to third, and it'll be a foul ball. Yeah. The rivalry with Madison Southern, it, it, for as long as I can remember, Southern had really been the top team. Now Madison Central goes over there last week, and in two different days because of the rain and everything, able to basically have the mercy rule in yeah. effect to get that win. We know that Southern lost a lot of talented players last year that are playing college softball. Yeah. But, you know, what do you think is the biggest difference between the two teams now than what you saw when you were in school? Um, well, right now, Central, <laughs> for the district, this sounds kind of bad, but Central has all the talent. I mean, all the other teams definitely have talent, but Central is definitely, like, top tier, um, especially with the coaches and everything. But when I was – I, ugh, when we played against Southern last year in the district championship, I really thought we were going to win. But, you know, we had a couple errors, and as soon as we had, like, two errors at home plate, we just let it go. But, yeah, Southern lost everything, like you were saying. They lost their pitchers. They lost their whole infield. They yeah. lost their catchers. So there's there's not really, like, anything left. Now, Aniston Bray is over at, uh, model. at model. Do you know anything about I know she's a really good player going with, to Western. Yeah, I played with Boo since I was seven. Wow, yeah. so you've got a good relationship there. Yeah. So talk about her. I mean, you talked about all the talent being here, but there's a really good player at model as oh, well yeah, with Aniston she's, Bray. She's really good. Um, so I played with her since I was seven, and she was six. So, like, babies. Rusty and my dad actually coach together. They coach Jinx, and then – I left Jinx like at 14U. So yeah, me, me and Aniston played together for a while, but she's really showing out at model. She's um, definitely a top player in the district. She's doing really well this year, and I'm super proud of her. And just seeing that, like my old teammate, I'm like, yeah, it, boo. we call her Boo. Well, I was going to so ask I'm you, like, what's, yeah, the, what's the 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 story behind that that nickname? Um, she's just ever since preschool. Like, her preschool teacher called her Boo. I don't know why, but <laughs> everyone calls her that. Like, her parents call her that. It's weird saying Aniston, but, yeah, it's Boo. I don't know the backstory, but we've always called her that. Okay. We got another error on Great Crossing. Three straight errors, and now three runs have come across from Madison Central to make this score 5-1 Lady Indians. And the defense not helping out Ogle right now for the Lady Warhawks as they've seen this lead now jump to four in this inning, and a three-run inning for Madison Central. Yeah, Hannah got lucky with that one. I was going to ask you what you <laughs> thought she might do in that at bat. I don't know if you could have called that E5 right there. She um she hasn't been waiting on the ball. She, her bat speed is so fast, so it's hard for her to wait on the ball, and she didn't there, but she'll get there. It's now Kaylor, the pitcher at the place. She flew out to center field in the last at bat back in the first inning that – was the uh, second out of that first inning. Kaylor trying to help herself out now, maybe add some more insurance runs to that lead. Won't help it there as she grounds out to the third baseman to throw over in plenty of time for the out. But the damage done, Madison Central tacking on three runs to make it 5-1 as we head to the third. Lady Indians with the lead. We'll step aside and come right back. Hanging out with Skylar Jacob on the call with us this evening. We'll talk to her more when we come back on WBON-TV. At Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, the health and safety of our patients is important. Along with following CDC guidelines, we have added a Jade unit, a medical grade air purifier in every operatory. Our new patient special x-rays, exam, cleaning, and fluoride is only $99. We offer patients single visit restorations on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with CIRAC. We are equipped to handle all your dental needs from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. Call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0201. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. 
Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Here at Madison Central. Folks, check this out. So during that last half inning, this thing right here, and she didn't help me out. She's the softball player. She, I turned around. I'm trying to hear. I'm doing this, trying to keep it away. She, I look around. She's standing up here. by the camera. <laughs> and luckily, uh, it missed. Somehow it avoided the equipment. That's the big thing. You know, I don't want to pay for some of this stuff, but I will give this back to Randy Hall following. Look at the M's. Wait, there it is. See the MC on there for that. So this thing, yeah, literally up here. Uh, with this in the left field, so appreciate Skyler for not helping me out there much. And <laughs> uh, I don't know what Gage was doing either. Gage tried to stand up and kind of – it was like slow motion too. It's like, yeah, that's why I didn't play <laughs> softball or baseball or whatever when I was in school. We're back to action here Madison Central with 5-1 Lee. We're talking to Skyler Jacob, a former Madison Central Indian, who – do you know when you'll have your decision made about where you're going to go play next year? Um, Probably in a month. Okay. I'll at, a like, bit. yeah, at the most a month. This one's kind of hot, softly hit, and Ison lost it in the sun. It kind of took a weird spin on it from right field. Got a good shot there. Dawson Rule up top. Our cameraman this evening, Madison Central, with this lead. And at the plate now is Livingston, <coughs> the center fielder for Great Crossing. So we're talking to Skyler Jacob. Skyler, when you look at the 11th region as a whole, I mean, Madison Central 17 3. They're undefeated in 11th region play. I mean, this team has all the makings right now of making a run to the state tournament. Mm -hmm. I think they can make it to the state tournament for sure. So, you know, when you, your dad's you know, part of the coaching staff. What is he saying about, you know, the, the practices and how everything goes has, has gone throughout the season? Um, he said it's been um, pretty good. The girls are putting in the work. As you can see, they can't even um, – they have to do work outside of practices well just to be as good as they are. But um, it's definitely paying off, whatever they're doing. He can't make it to, like, a lot of the practices because of work. But, um, yeah, I think they're doing a lot, and it is paying off. Now, since your dad's, you know, helping you train, you're talking there in the commercial break as Livingston gets set for the pitch and a nice rip into left field for a base hit. Another leadoff runner aboard for the Lady Warhawks. But you were talking there in between the commercial breaks, so... Your dad's been training you, but he's also been making you put some mulch out at the house. So yeah. So wh wh where does that come in with the softball training? <laughs> make, making you keep your keep while you're in town, I yeah, guess? Yeah, it keep me busy. It's like, go do this, this, and this. I'm like, okay. Well, my sister's graduation party is coming up. She's a senior at EKU, so we're just getting the house ready for that. So, yeah, they're putting me to work now ever since I've been back. Can't get a break. <laughs> <laughs> we got Sullivan back at the – plate top of the order she singled the left center field her first time around was caught trying to steal second by Ison on a beautiful throw down and a nice tag applied by Metcalf now you played short last year yeah. Metcalf's done a really good job she leads the team in home runs this year uh did you have a relationship with her at all last season when you were the starting shortstop yeah I've, I've had a relationship for, with her for years um she actually lives in my neighborhood so I my mom used to <laughs> babysit her and her twin, so she was always over. But yeah, I definitely had a relationship with her last year. Olivia is more of the quiet one, but I'm really glad she stepped up. A hard hit ball into right center field. They're going to hold up. Oh. Going to be close. Going to have a play at the plate here. Maybe if not, she'll eat it. So the Metcalf decides to eat it there and not try to. Forced a throw home as a run comes in to score to make this 6-2. Kind of sloppy play there. And now, oh, uh, she was, Sullivan's just taking her equipment over. I thought she was going to be advancing up the third. But kind of some sloppy play, as you see. They hold both runners. And then the throw over kind of just sneaks out of the glove of Metcalf, allowing the runner to come home and, and cut into that deficit and now make it 5-2. Uh, in that situation, what would you have liked to have seen them done with the – you know, the, kind of the losing of the ball in the air, allowing that run to come in. Um, they should have communicated better because there was pretty much no talking and backed up each other. I mean, they definitely did the right thing of throwing it to second just because she was really off the yeah. she's really off the bag. But um, they need to communicate and have those backups because if they did, then that wouldn't have happened. But so that Sullivan, sorry, she's actually a UK commit. I'm pretty sure. Oh wow, she's, she's the good. shortstop. Yeah, yeah her sister um, Nani. I played with her in the East-West All-Star Games. Nani is at Minnesota right now. Wow. Okay. So some very talented lineage there, that yeah. family. So that single 
uh, getting her on board. Now she's in scoring position as well. We're talking to Skylar Jacob, played for Madison Central last season and going to be uh, transferring. You've got all four years left, right? Yeah, got I all do. four years of eligibility left. Now I only play, so I played some uh, some JV college basketball. I've still got three years. I'm thinking about seeing if Coach Cal or maybe Coach Hamilton wants to see me. Let me come <laughs> out there and, and play for the Colonels or something like that. I think 33 years old. They let me play, Gage. No, Mm-mm. okay. Appreciate it. We've got uh, Luca Du, who leads the team in home runs. Uh, her and now Clay, who hit her fourth home run, tied for the team lead. For the Lady Warhawks, that pitch is going to be fouled off back behind home plate. So, Skyler, now you're back home. Do you come to a lot of practices or games for Madison Central this year that you've been when you're coming back home? And uh, have you talked to this team many and talked about the success they've had this year? Um, some the people I talk to the most if, is definitely Jazz and Hannah, and I I talk to them about practicing practices and games. This is probably my fourth game that I've came to, just because of, like I was at Western three hours away. But, yeah, I haven't been to any of their practices. But it's funny because after every game, Hannah, like, texts me her stats and tell, tells me how she does and keeps me updated. But I watch them online when you guys are live. Yeah. That's what I do. We haven't been able to be live this year as much yeah. because of the, you know, the, the field issue. But now they're getting to play some home games to kind of wrap up the season as that one will get fouled down the left field line. So you, what made you choose to go to Western after you decommitted and decided not to play softball this year? Um, well, EKU was definitely an option for me, but everyone from my high school was going there, which isn't a problem, but, like, I wanted to go out and, like, find my own way and, like, meet new people and everything, so that's what I wanted to do. Just be independent, more independent, which has paid off a lot. I I feel like I've, um, grown up a lot more just being away from home, and, um, I took a lot of things from gra- for granted when I was at home, because <laughs> when I was in the dorms, I was like, oh, this is awful. But now when I'm home, I get my mom to cook me meals There now. you go. That's Have the best part to about, myself. Yeah, that's the best part about going back home. You know, you get the home cooking, and maybe mom will wake you up again. You ain't got to use the alarm anymore yeah. for, for a couple of days. So that's always good, coming back home. and Yeah, three hours. Now, did you – I know Isaiah Cozart was down there. Did you ever see Isaiah any at all? I didn't. I know he's actually um, – he transferred to He's EKU. coming to Eastern, yep. Yeah, he didn't really play, so I think that's why he's transferring as well. Well, I know talking to Coach Hamilton, that's a big deal for them. He's very excited about having Isaiah come back yeah. home. And yeah, there was a, there was some really good players ahead of Isaiah there. Of course, his freshman year, you know, that Charles Bassett, who's in the NBA playing mm-hmm. um, this past season. I don't know if it, I don't know if it was just was not a good fit for Cozart, but I'm glad to see him come back home. And I think he's still got two years of eligibility left mm-hmm. as well. So that'll be a big piece of the EKU team as Luca Du coaches the walk and Great Crossing now with a pair of runners on. Still no outs here. In the top of the third inning. That's just one of those things for Isaiah again. Um, Cause our, he's just um, he's so talented and like you don't want to waste that. So might as well go somewhere where you're gonna play. Yeah, and I think he'll be a perfect fit with EKU because they've got a, a lot of talent that can surround him and really play off what he is able to do. Which we, if you remember when he played at Madison Central, a lot of uh, blocked shots during the career of Isaiah Cozart. See Madison Central here. I know prom was you know, pretty recent, and seeing a lot of these kids dressed up. Now you went your prom was that boy, was that even a year ago? I know it, it was yeah. kind of pushed back because of COVID last year. They're going to have a play at the plate here. No, they're going to cut it off. And another run coming in. Great crossing battling here. They've cut into that deficit now. Make it five three off the RBI single from Holbrook in the advance up to second base, putting now two runners in scoring position, and now the tying run at second. For Great Crossing. Yeah, there's no outs either. <laughs> like, uh. You might have to go over and line them out. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in the top of the third. Skyler Jacob on the call here with me, Michael Watkins. And about to have Skyler here talking about her decision to step down and, and decommit uh, last year from playing college softball. She's getting ready to make her decision on where she'll be going. Still four years of eligibility left. That pitch a called strike. Got a 1-1 count throw down. Not going to be in time to get Holbrook. Man, you know, you look back at your time at Madison Central, and I remember last year everybody was talking about I mean, it seemed like after every game I was getting a message from your mom, another home run today, another home run. Um, y- you know, when, when it was your all's last game, talk about those emotions and, and how you think this team can use that themselves for fuel going into the latter part of the season. 
Well, actually, which is funny, they're playing Great Crossing right now. Great Crossing's actually the one who knocked us out first round of region. But, um, uh, I mean, going into it, I it was uh, it was emotional, but I'm like, I got to put these emotions emotions aside <laughs> just because, like I said before, I, like I've played with the twins for years. Yeah. I think they're the only ones I've played with like for a while. Oh, I played with um, Michaela. I played with her since like 10 U as well. But like I said, I'm really close with the twins. So going into that game, and great crossing me as you say we're last year. <laughs> um, it was just emotional and. Um, I hated it. And after the game, of course, I cried. Me and Hannah had our little moment. <laughs> a little powwow, yeah. Yeah. But um, I, don't, I don't know anybody that's played their last game, no matter what the the sport is or the class. I mean, it could be high school, college. It's a very emotional time because you know that man, this is the last time I'm putting on this yeah. uniform. And you put a lot of sweat and blood, sweat and tears into that. Yeah, for six years. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it's obviously emotional. I don't know anybody that could play their final game and not get emotional. So that's obviously, I mean, I, I, I teared up playing my last game at the YMCA a couple of weeks ago knowing that the season was coming to an end. So, <laughs> Although I did know that I wouldn't be sore, you know, for a few weeks anymore after <laughs> finishing up that year. But, yeah, so do you, are, you gonna, are you able to play like any rec league ball right now? Did you do any of that while you was at Western? I know intramurals is a big deal, so you've got to be. Um, there was that, but it was more of like sororities and yeah, frats yeah. that did that. And I was like, oh. But no, I didn't really do that. I just came home and worked out with my dad. And that's it. So you come home every weekend. No, okay. like every other weekend. So it was a lot of driving and um, me working out. It's just putting in a lot of work right now. I pitch a college strike. Gonna throw down again and barely in time as Holbrook slides back safe. It's Clay at the plate. She had that solo home run to right center field her last time up. Here's a pitch. That was popped up softly and caught by the third baseman, Gildald. So two outs in the inning, two on for Great Crossing. The tying run in scoring position. Lady Indians trying to get out of the jam here. And now you know both these girls. Hannah just came over and talked to Keller. What do you think she said to her to try to close out this inning? Um, finish strong, like you got this, probably something like that, just words of encouragement. That's that's usually what Hannah does. Another one coming in <laughs> our direction. This one won't come as deep as it reaches foul territory. A lot of fence right now yeah. lined up here yeah. at Madison. We've got the fence down the left field line, a fence in between us for, uh, I guess, football purposes, and then the fence here right in front of us here on the railing at the press box of the football stadium. So it's an 0-1 count as – we bring you action here on WBON-TV. Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night. Skylar Jacob, former Madison Central softball player, played here last year, joining us on the broadcast as that count now goes to 0-2. So what do you think, as we wrap up this inning, Madison Central needs to do to make a deep run in the postseason? Um, what they need to do um – Probably not. I feel like they're a little cocky now just because they're doing so well, which is amazing. I mean, they should be. They should be confident in that. But make sure to give it your all each and every game. Um, they have talent, and they need to make sure, like I said, to use that every game and not let that go to waste because they can definitely go far this year if they really try. Run comes in to score as that ball gets past the catcher, Ison, and that now allows Great Crossing to – Make it a one-run deficit, three runs in the top of the third, answering the three runs in the bottom of the second for Madison Central, and it's now a 5-4 lead for the Lady Indians. This one's fouled back. The count will stay one and two. They definitely got the talent to do so. I mean, oh, for sure. Looking at what they've been able to do this year, again, top to bottom, this lineup has been so good this season. And then what Kaler and then some of the younger pitchers have been able to do as well. I think it's got to give them confidence and all the fans confidence as well that they can make a deep run. Swing and a miss, strike three, and that will end the inning as Clay strikes out following her solo home run. It's 5-4. we got a good one here, folks, on WBOM. We'll step aside. Appreciate Skylar Jacob for joining us here on the broadcast, and we'll be paying close attention to her as she gets ready to make her decision in the next month or so about where she will be continuing her college athletic career. We'll come right back here at Madison Central High School on WBON-TV. Get the money you need now. Apply for a home equity line of credit at Cumberland Valley National Bank today with no payments for six months.
and low rates, there's never been a better time to tap into your home's equity. Locally family owned and operated Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is a full service construction company offering full service home maintenance. Bluegrass Restoration specializes in wind, fire and water damage and mold remediation. With 24 seven emergency services, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction is here to serve you during any emergency. All their services are performed in house with no subcontractors. No job is too big or small for Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. Give them a call at 859-353-1133. Get the money you need now. Apply for a home equity line of credit at Cumberland Valley National Bank today. With no payments for six months and low rates, there's never been a better time to tap into your home's equity. Back here on WBON TV, folks, I have survived. The ball did not hit me during the last inning, so we're good to go. It did get very close, and Skylar Jacob, a softball player uh, here at Madison Central last year, did not do her best to protect me, but uh, we got Trina Moore coming on. We'll have you put this headset on if you don't care, and we'll talk about CF here. So it's, it is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month, and uh, you, you, know, you were talking here as we came on the air about cystic fibrosis and trying to raise awareness for it. Of course, your daughter, Amber, uh, you know, uh, dealing with that her whole life. And it's a very awesome thing that you all started while she was in school mm -hmm. trying to raise awareness with it. And, and while we're here, just talk about that and uh, kind of how it's been with her combating that during her life. All right. Um, so, yeah, May is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month. And so we really try to focus on throughout the month of May about bringing awareness to the disease of cystic fibrosis. Um, purple is the color for CF, and so a lot of Amber's friends have purple nails and hair, and everyone wears uh, purple throughout the month so that we can, um, if someone asks, you know, why do you have purple hair in? That gives us an opportunity to tell them about cystic fibrosis. Um, cystic fibrosis is a terminal illness. It's a digestive and lung disease. Um, it is an inherited disease. So her father and I both are gene carriers and we're unaware. Um, and there's a 25% chance at that point for a, a child to have CF. And so Amber has um, been living with CF since the age of three months. That's when we wow. found out that she had it. She was born with it. We didn't know till she was three months. And so from that point, she's t done a lot of uh, medicines, treatments um, to stay healthy. And so thankfully she has never been hospitalized and she has been pretty healthy throughout her entire 19 years so far. Now I heard you talking about she has to take five pills a day mm -hmm. to, uh, or when she, when she eats to kind of help digest the food that she eats. And uh, obviously, that's kind of, I guess, the big thing that she has to do daily to, to just kind of make it through uh, and, and live kind of a normal life. Yeah. Um, so, CF actually affects lungs and digestive system, and Amber's is mainly her digestive system, which is where she's been affected. Um, unfortunately, some other people with CF have more lung disease. Thankfully, Amber does not. But her um, digestive uh, disease doesn't allow her to break down food. And so every time Amber eats, she has to take five pancreatic enzymes to break down that food. Otherwise she would get no nourishment from that. So she takes hundreds of pills a month just to be able wow. to function. Well, you know, it's awesome what y'all have been able to do here. Again, since she was in school, uh, just kind of tell the folks what she's doing now. I mean. All right. So, yeah, over the years, uh, we have we have an Amber's Angels team, and so we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, actually, to donate to CF. And so with that money, she's been able to get a new medicine called Trikafta. It's tr uh, truly life-changing. Amber started it two years ago. Um, since then, she's been able to stop a lot of her treatments and actually just live a normal life. She is uh, finishing up her freshman year at EKU right now. Um, she's clogging on a competitive team wow. in Winchester. Um, she is planning on being a kindergarten teacher when she gets out of school and opening up a dance studio. And so wow. she's got really big goals that she's uh, going to be able to reach and, um, you know, live out her life just like everyone else does. So. Well, that's awesome. And, and listen, any, I think anybody that even thinks about going, just because of the times we're in now, that teaching is something that is very uh, difficult with the time. I guess it's just the times that we're in now. And I think 
those teachers need praise more now than they've ever needed it or deserved it. So the fact that she's going to put, you know, kind of going into that for her career is uh, applaudable. As uh, we are in the bottom of the third, Madison Central still with that one run lead. It's five to four. Uh, Michael Watkins here. We're talking about cystic fibrosis and. Amber, you know, if we talked about the team that you all have put together, or Trina, mm -hmm. for Amber. Uh, talk about how people, if, if somebody would like to get involved, if, if there's a Facebook page or the details you can give out, how they can get involved with it. So Amber's CF team's called Amber's Angels, and she does have a CF um, Facebook page. And then also um, she, we've made a lot of donations to CFS, that's Cystic Fibrosis foundation and so that's who actually does the research for new medicine okay. so the med uh, the money that goes to the cff foundation that's where the research comes from and then amber goes to uk clinic for the cf clinic there and so they have their own little kcfs and they actually fund kentucky families so maybe oh, wow. that aren't able to um, get their child to the doctor they'll send them gas cards or uh, aid in any way that they can to make sure that their children are getting the help that they need and now, so when, when she was going through all the treatments and mm -hmm. testing and everything was it something that you all were able to do in Lexington or did you have to go out of state to do well all we did we did do a lot of testing in Lexington um, it was a little di bit difficult 19 years ago to figure yeah. out she was a preemie so she was only two pounds when she was born and so we ended up going to um, we went to Louisville, we went to Lexington, and, and Ohio to, just to try wow. to figure out. But, yeah, she's been at UK Clinic since she's been three months old, and Dr. Conga and the team there have taken fantastic care of her. Um, and so she still continues to go to the clinic every three months to get checked, uh, her FEVs, which is her breathing test, and make sure all of her levels are, are doing good. Now, you, you, know, you talked about some of the things that she has to do. And you said that it was until she was three months old when you all found out. How did that come about? Like, was it just a test that they did and they found it out? Or No, actually, that is a newborn screening now. Um, okay. There was a lot of push and legislation that had to go through to get that to pass. But So every baby now uh, gets a newborn screener for CF. But when Amber was born, that wasn't the case. And so she was failure to thrive. She was not gaining because of her digestive issues. She wasn't gaining weight. And so she was very, very ill. And so um, we just had to continue to test until we found out, you know, what was wrong with her. So well, there you go. And it's just, it's crazy how you know you think you're bringing the baby home, and I've got two now and one on the way. So you, you just you think everything's perfect, and then mm -hmm. boom, all of a sudden, anything like that can change. And uh, but it, it I think it's just a good reminder to always look for things like that, but to always also going to the doctor's not a bad thing, folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we've seen it with. Uh, people just finding cancer and just because they went to the doctor had had something a mole or whatever the case Absolutely. may be. Oh well, that's what that is. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's that's never a bad thing to go to the doctor. I've always thought it was, and here recently I've you know I've I've changed my thoughts on those things as well. But just to go and get checked because you never know when you're going to find something, and it's always better to be safe and find something early than to find it too late. Well, Amber's a triplet, so she had two other siblings that I could kind of compare at that point and see that something wasn't just right. You know, I could tell that something wasn't right with her. And so um, I kind of pushed for the doctors to continue to check. We really didn't find very much out right at first. And so we just had to continue to dig until we found out what was wrong with her. So give that Facebook page one more time before we Amber's get you out Amber's Angels here. is her Facebook page and CFS. CFF is the National Organization for Cystic Fibrosis. Now, is there anything going on this month? I know you said May. Yeah, she's going to do a walk um, at Keeneland in a couple of weeks, and then we just try to spread awareness through Facebook and talking to people. Like I said, wearing purple, going up to meet people, and usually the hair, the purple hair. I don't yeah. know if you've noticed, but a lot of the girls are wearing purple hair, and that usually brings the most attention. Uh, people ask, why do you have purple hair? And so that brings us an opportunity to tell them about cystic fibrosis and about um, we really try to spread awareness for Amber but more so people that aren't doing as well as yeah. Amber and trying to get uh, new medicines for them that are needing um, help right now. So. There you go. Well, thank you for joining us on the broadcast. And, folks, don't forget to check out that Facebook page. And be aware, again, because you never know uh, when something like this could happen to you. So it's always good to have the idea and the information there at hand. Check out that Facebook page for more information. We'll step aside and come back for the uh, the next half inning. It's Madison Central still on top 5-4. A good one here brewing between two 11th region teams on WBON-TV. 
Batteries Unlimited in Richmond can energize you when your batteries fade out. They can also cut and make most home and automobile keys, replace and program key fobs, and make copies of your house keys. Plus, cell phone screen repair. Bring in your Apple or Samsung today. We are your home for all batteries. Go see Chris at Batteries Unlimited, Commercial Drive in Richmond. Granite, marble, and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. Madison Central 5-4 lead and immediately one out recorded here in the top half of the fourth inning as we come back to action on WBON. Appreciate Trina Moore there coming on to talk about Cystic Fibrosis and Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month. Folks, again, check out Amber's Angels. That's the Facebook page, and uh, they uh, share a lot of info on there about Cystic Fibrosis and, and all things that go on with that as we are batting here in the Top of the fourth inning, another hard hit ball, a high pop up, middle infield coming together, as is the center fielder Moore, who calls off Metcalf to make the catch and quickly two away here in the fourth inning. That was Destiny Reed. So coming up to bat now for a great crossing is the center fielder Livingston. Livingston batting 250 on the season. She'll swing through for strike one. Madison Central with this 5-4 lead. Making her way through the middle innings here. Michael Watkins on the call. Appreciate Trina Moore and Skylar Jacob for joining us here. That pitch taken below the knees, a ball and a strike. Always good to talk to some of the former athletes, whether it's here on at the games or it's on the call, or maybe it's on the sports show, whatever the case may be. Love catching up with some of these former athletes we've got to see come through the ranks here with the local school, whether it be Madison Central, or whether it be Madison Southern, Model, or Berea. We've had a lot of really talented players come through the programs here. We appreciate kind of uh, the chance to shine the light on those student athletes. That pitch below the knees as well, and the count now 2-1 and one from Kaler. Madison Central, a quick inning there in that uh, bottom of the third after giving up that four-run lead. Now just in, in front by one and a pitch that hits Livingston and puts her aboard as we go back to the top of the order now. And the very dangerous Sullivan, who, as Skyler said, was going to the University of Kentucky. She admitted to, uh, uh, had committed to Kentucky. So a very dangerous player stepping up to the plate with a chance to Potentially tie things up. She can get one into the gap here. Pitch up high, ball one. Sullivan, a really good hitter. She is singled in both of her at-bats so far tonight. At first base, Livingston tying run aboard here in the fourth. This pitch down the left field line, and a great catch. How about the catch by Kaler in left field? Check out the hard hit from Sullivan and the diving stab right there in left field for out number three to end the inning. That could have tied things up, but a great defensive effort by Kaler making the catch, or make that hack, excuse me, hack, making the catch in left field. What a grab as Hack hauls that one in to end the inning. Helping out her pitcher, Kaler. Cassidy Hack right there in left field. A tremendous catch there as we will see this inning come to an end. We'll go back to the bottom of the fourth. Madison Central clinging to a one-run lead. It's a tight one here, folks, on WBON-TV. Life can be so hectic. The most important moment in my life is my escape. The moments when I'm free from all of the notifications. The moments when I'm with you.
You are my escape. Carissa Boutique. Simply unforgettable. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606 66 Natalie Ison with a nice base hit as we come back from action here, and she's going to round second and head for third. A triple to start the inning for Ison. As Madison Central, a chance to add some insurance runs here in the bottom of the fourth inning, live on WBON TV. Saw a great catch by Cassidy Hack that ended the top of the fourth inning. And now a triple to lead things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the play by Hack as Sullivan, a hard hit ball down the left field line. Cassidy Hack, a diving effort to make the catch, a inning, inning diving stab there by Hack, and a great job. And we'll have to see her come up to bat. She's in the on deck circle here as Morin will bat with one on and nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Orange squaring around a bunt. She will foul it off down the first base side. Got an 0-1 count. Madison Central 17-3 on the season. They're 4-0 versus 11th region opponents. They've been so good this year. A big turnaround. Last year, kind of middle of the pack in the 11th region. But this season, they have taken that next step under first-year head coach Randy Hall. And this staff has done a tremendous job of kind of just getting the job done. They've when they've been the favorites, they've taken care of business. When they've been the underdog, they have surprised some people, but they are surprising teams no more. Folks know about Madison Central softball, and this team that won region championships in 2000, 2001, and 2002, threatening to do so again here in 2022. A ball and a strike as Ogle sets and delivers. Morin gets the bunt down, and the throw down going to be – Awry as it goes past the first baseman. Morin is going to round second and head for third, and she will be in there as miscommunication and some bad defense there by Greg Crossing, allowing this run to come in to score. You see the ball there in right field. Morin, good hustle. She gets around the back, and the run comes in to score. Lady well, Indians tack on an insurance run. It is now six to four. <coughs> That'll bring up Cassidy Hack following that tremendous catch in left field. Let's see if she can follow it up with a base hit in an RBI. Hard hit in a right field. That might be enough to score Morin. Ball is caught. Morin will come in and Morin will score. The RBI sack fly by Cassidy Hack driving in the run. Now three RBI in the game for Hack and the lead is back to three. So Madison Central's advantage 7-4 with Hannah Eisen batting with the bases empty. Hannah, a hard rip in the left field. That one's going, and it'll go off the fence. Eisen will round first. She'll head for second, and Madison Central is finding their stride here in the fourth. Another base hit, this one off the wall in left center field, and Hannah Eisen's one-out double puts another runner in scoring position as the pitcher, Kaler, now comes to the plate with a chance to help herself out here in the fourth. Jasmine flew out to center field and grounded out to third. 0 for 2 in the game thus far. But a good time for a base hit if she can get it with Hannah Eisen over at second base. Hard hit ball on the right field. Right fielder will make the catch. And Eisen able to slide back in safely to second. 
as that one was good contact, but quickly caught by the right fielder. Brings up Carly Speakman, a two RBI double to right field, her first time up. Speakman, a chance for another RBI, if she can get one into the outfield here with the speed of Ison. Speakman takes the first pitch for a called strike. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Madison Central with 7-4 lead. Great crossing with at least three at-bats remaining as we stand with a chance to kind of close the gap here, making our way through the middle innings here at Madison Central High School. The 0-1, Speakman, a hard hit ball down the line at third. Throw over, in time, good defense. A nice backhanded stab there at third by Lukadu as she throws over to first to get the out. But errors have killed great crossing tonight. They still in this one, though, as we go to the fifth. A 7-4 lead for Madison Central here live on WBON-TV. For over 40 years, Lakes Funeral Home and Crematory in Berea have been helping families through the hardest times in their lives. With traditional burial planning to cremation, the folks at Lakes can help you honor your loved ones with final arrangements. Lakes can also help pre-plan now. Let your family members know what you want and help ease their burden. Visit lakesfuneralhome.com to learn how easy it can be to pre-plan. Lakes Funeral Home and Crematory, the only on-site crematory in Madison County. This is Central 7, Great Crossing 4, here live on WBON-TV. Michael Watkins with you. We appreciate you joining us here, folks, as Lady Indians lead it by three going into the top half of the fifth inning. Timely base hits and really some poor defensive decisions by Great Crossing have allowed Madison Central to take and build this lead. As we go into the fifth inning, leading off for Great Crossing is Lukadu. First pitch strike taken by the number two hitter in the lineup for the Lady Warhawks. And strike two. Look at who taken there and falling behind quickly. Kaler working quick in an 0-2 lead in the count. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Hard hit ball coming back at us. That one will get past us. And on to the railing once again. So still 0-2. I'll well, bring a glove with us next time, Gage. <laughs> Gage to our producer, Michael Watkins here with you as that pitch is up high and the count now one ball, two strikes. Taylor gets the sign from Coach Hall from inside the dugout. Lady Indians trying to put them away in this inning. Here's the pitch. Hard hit ball. That's going to stay in the infield up high, and Metcalf will call everybody off and make the catch from the shortstop position for the out. So one out, nobody on as we bring Holbrook back to the plate. She grounded into a fielder's choice back in the first inning, an RBI single in the third.
One out in the inning. Kaler gets the sign and the pitch. This one's hit hard into center field. Morin coming over, and she'll make the grab for out number two. So two outs in the inning. Madison Central still leading at 7-4 to four in the top of the fifth. And one more out to end the inning. As coming to the plate is the catcher, Ward, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Taylor, the pitch, and that pitch down in the dirt. Two zero the count as Ward battles here versus Kaler, trying to get a base runner for great crossing here in the fifth. Kaler won that away from a one two three top of the fifth inning. A swing and a miss, make it two and one. Two balls and a strike, two outs, Madison Central seven, Great Crossing four, in a matchup of the top team in the 11th region versus Great Crossing, kind of middle of the pack. This ball hit hard, popped up, and Sebastian backing up into the edge of the grass at second base to make the catch. Three outs, three up, three down for Great Crossing as Madison Central's Kaler starts to find her way in the circle for the Lady Indians. A three-run lead as we go to the bottom half of the fifth on WBON-TV. It's frustrating when something unexpected happens to our vehicles. That's why Chris Thorne and the staff at CT Diesel Repair are here to ease that burden. They offer roadside service, can come haul your vehicle to the shop, and will keep you updated throughout the entire process. One thing that keeps our vehicles performing at their highest level is the tires we put on them. CT Diesel has great deals on tires right now, just in time for the colder weather ahead. Mention this ad and get a free rotating balance with any oil change at CT Diesel Repair. Visit ctdiesel.us for more information. The Beast of the East roars back to life for their 2022 racing season. Most Saturday nights, some Friday nights, and maybe even a Sunday. You can take the whole family down to the Richmond Raceway for some good family fun. Watch the drivers race around the 1,584 feet play track for some big winnings. Children 10 and under are always admitted free. Richmond Raceway, Greens Crossing off Highway 52 East and RichmondRaceway.net. Join us this Saturday for Driver and Crew Appreciation Night and unleash your inner beast at the Richmond Raceway. Madison Central 7, Great Crossing 4 here live on WBON-TV. Appreciate you joining us here, folks, as we come at you live at Madison Central High School, the newly renovated field that will still need some work uh, to finish it up for next season. Uh, but tonight, Madison Central playing at home, one of their few home games this year. And it's Great Crossing here for the game tonight. There are some more home games this week for the Lady Indians. If you'd like to get out and see the top team in the 11th region, uh, take on some really good opponents. Uh, so we got them here tonight. And then coming up on the uh, the 13th, they'll be at home against Bryan Station. And then on the 14th this weekend, they'll be at home versus Mel, another one of the top teams in the state. So a chance to see some really good baseball or softball over the next week here at Madison Central High School. Tomorrow, Madison Southern will be at home. They will take on Montgomery County. That'll be another game that we'll have here for you live on WBON. So, appreciate you joining us here, folks. Lady Indians on top 7-4. to four. Great crossing this year. 12-11 and 11 on the season. 6-3 and three against the 11th region opponents. Told you about the wins that they picked up. They've also, or they've knocked off Franklin County uh, twice. They're 12 and 8 and 11 to 1 with the two scores over Franklin County. They beat Frankfurt 11 to nothing. Western Hills 11 to 1. Uh, have lost to Lafayette twice and to Scott County this year. So those are their 11th region opponents. They also knocked off Tates Creek 8 to 5. So that's how they stand, kind of in the middle of the road in the 11th region. 11th region standings look like this: Madison Central at the top. 17 and 3, Catholic of Lexington, Lexington Catholic. They're 20 and 4 this year. They are 11 and 0 versus 11th region teams. Lafayette third, Western Hills fourth, Scott County fifth. Great Crossing comes in ranked sixth in the 11th region. 
First pitch to Haley Sebastian taken for strike one. As these two teams battling it out here in Richmond. Lady Indians trying to get the win. Our boy Michael Higginbotham got us tuned in tonight. Appreciate Michael joining us on the broadcast. One ball, one strike now to Sebastian. Haley awaits and the 1-1. One, one. Hard hit to the shortstop. Fielded, going to be close and not going to have a play at first. Able to knock it down, but could not get the throw over in time for the out. And safe at first is Haley Sebastian. That brings up Metcalf to the plate. What a great year Olivia has had. She's been so good this season. Again, stepping into that shortstop row in place of Skylar Jacob, who graduated last year. We just talked to Skylar on the broadcast earlier this afternoon. Sebastian over at first. Here's the 1-0. Metcalf takes, and it's a called strike, a ball and a strike. Olivia this year, six home runs, which leads the team. She's got 20 RBI. That also leads the team and a 339 average. Pitch up high, 2 and 1. Metcalf again stepping in and filling in greatly for Skylar Jacob, who was incredible last year. We'll look back at the stats for Skylar after this pitch, but Madison Central, you know, obviously that is a big loss. She was the only player that uh, graduated last year that was a big part of the team as far as the lineup every single night. And when you thought maybe that they would miss her, Metcalf has stepped in again, filled that void so good. Jacob last year hit 11 home runs, hit 505 on the season. Here's the 2 2 to Metcalf. Olivia swings through for strike three. That's the first out of the inning. And as you normally see, whenever you build a player up like that, the old media jinx, he strikes out swinging. So one out and one on for Madison Central. Shelby Hensley will come to the plate. This one's coming right back at us. Look out, Dawson. Over the head of our cameraman, Dawson, into the bleachers. Got to look alive when you're up here on the call for a Madison Central softball game. 0-1 the count to Shelby Hensley. This one hit down in the dirt or a foul ball, 0-2. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the, the Hensley family, they have so many good athletes. Obviously, the, the the brother, younger brother, Brady, was so good at football last year. District player of the year, I mean, just took the state by storm in Class 6A. And they look at what Bailey did in basketball. Now Shelby doing damage on the softball field. She'll go down swinging here for the strikeout and back-to-back -back strikeouts from Addison Central as – Metcalf goes down, and Hensley does as well. Two outs in the inning, and the catcher, Ison will now come to the plate. She struck out her first time up. But, you know, talking about the Hensleys, I mean, you know, last year Brady kind of came out of nowhere to dominate Class 6A. He just ran all over everybody each and every single game. Now everybody's going to know about him. It will be interesting to see how – Teams kind of go about game planning for Brady Hensley, who was, again, an incredible performer last year for the Madison Central football team that went to the semifinals in the state championships before losing. And, uh, you know, folks, high expectations for them this year coming into the season. And then Bailey Hensley, I mean, she had, as I think, averaged 17 and 10 last year for the Madison Central basketball team, who is absolutely loaded with young talent, and they're going to be so good for, I would say, the next two or three years. You can expect Madison Central to go ahead and pencil them in as one of the top teams in the 11th region. And then you look at Madison Southern here, too. Two of our coverage area teams loaded with young talent uh, over the next few years. It's going to be very interesting to see how those things shape out uh, on, in girls' basketball. And then, of course, again, softball, talking about Hensley. 
Shelby's have been a really important piece of the team this year, playing in right field. That pitch to Ison taken. It's now three and one. Lady Indians a 7-4 lead. Got two more runs in the bottom of the fourth to push that lead back to three. Now it's three and one to Ison. Natalie fouls it off to run the count full. Three balls, two strikes. Ogle gets set. Ison ready for the pitch, and the payoff pitch coming. That one popped up softly in the infield. The first baseman will come in to make the catch for out number three. Lady Indians get the leadoff runner aboard, but Lever stranded as we go to the bottom, make it the top of the sixth, and a three-run lead for Madison Central on WBON-TV. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then, in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. Back on the call here with you, Madison Central taking on Great Crossing. We go to the top of the sixth inning, Lady Indians with that three-run lead. Great Crossing with one run in the second, three in the third to get their four runs. Lady Indians got two in the first, a three in the second, and two more in the fourth to get their seven and take this seven-to-four lead into the sixth inning. Talking to Randy Neely in between uh, the innings here. Graduation into the school year, folks. It's right around the corner. We're just a couple of weeks away. Madison Central graduation will be Friday night, and Madison Southern graduation will be on the 28th. Uh, that's Saturday night or Saturday morning. So, graduation in the school year right around the corner. Always an exciting but sad time as well for those kids that are be graduating. Got a 1-0 count here as Kaler battles off against Clay, the right fielder. Here's a pitch, and it's fouled off. One and one the count. Taylor gets the sign and the 1-1. Up high now, 2-1. Madison Central, the top-ranked team in the 11th region. They have shown displays tonight. Haven't been as dominant as they've been throughout the year, but, you know, as Skylar Jacob talked about when we were talking to her, their confidence right now at an all-time high, they kind of need to come back down to earth just a bit. Some of those losses, again, they've lost two of their last four, but this team knows and feels like they can be the top team in this region and win a regional championship. That one's hit right to Hack in left field. Another nice play made by her as she able to haul that one in for the first out of the inning. But you look at the pitching and the, the order, I mean, the lineup that they can put out there, there is talent all throughout this lineup for Randy Hall. And he said people step up all year long. No reason to think this team cannot bring home an 11th region championship. 
But just because you're the top team in the 11th region doesn't always mean you're going to bring home the title. This 11th region is always hard to, to kind of navigate and make it through. Seven for your score as now coming to the plate for Great Crossing. It's Emma Sutton going to be pinch hitting. And a first pitch strike. Sutton pitch hitting where Miller would have been batting. Nothing in one. Kaler gets the sign and the pitch. Grounded back over to third. And a nice defensive play by Gildall to... Field the grounder and throw it over for out number two. Got to bring up Blaine Ogle, the pitcher. Ogle wears number three, facing off against Kaler. Two out, base is empty. First pitch, a called strike. Kaler has been so good at getting ahead of batters this evening. Got an 0-1 count as she faces off against her pitching counterpart, Ogle. <coughs> the 0-1 pitch. Grounded hard past Ison at first. Ricochets off her glove past Sebastian at second. Into right field and the base hit for... Ogle, the pitcher for Great Crossing. Brings up Destiny Reed. Reed tonight has flown out to left field in her first at bat. Bats here with a chance to Try to cut into that three-run deficit. The tying run now in the on-deck circle. This one's fouled off behind home play. A great pitch by Kaler as it kind of ran up in the zone against the batter, Reed. The 0-2. Down in the dirt, and they're going to say it hit her. Hit by pitch for Reed, and now she's aboard. And the center fielder Livingston will come to the plate. Livingston singled to center field her first time up. Strike one here on the foul ball. Oh, and one the count. Madison Central battling here against Great Crossing. Two aboard, tying run at the plate. Kaler trying to buckle down and get out of this inning. Here's the 0-1. And they're going to throw down. Sebastian has to kind of track it down from Natalie Austin behind home plate. One and one the count. Taylor gets the sign from Randy Hall. Checks her equipment. Gets the sign and fouls off the pitch. Does Livingston back behind the first base dugout. Count stays one and two. One ball, two strikes. Madison Central is 7-4 lead over Great Crossing. Kaler one strike away from getting out of sort of a mini jam here in the sixth inning. This one's popped up, and again, we'll get out of play. Stays one and two. Kaler again just looking for one more strike. A good battle here. Versus Livingston. Bottom of the order for Great Crossing at the plate. Here's the pitch, the 1-2 again, and 
That one just missed. Count now even two and two. Two balls, two strikes. The delivery. Ball three, and the count now full. Full count. Two on. Tying run at the plate. The go-ahead run could be coming to the plate if Kaler can't get this strike or a ground ball. Got her looking. Swing and a make it to make it a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss as Livingston can't make contact and the inning comes to an end. Nice pitch there by Kaler as Livingston gave her a battle, but Kaler will win the war as the inning comes to an end. Madison Central retains the three-run lead. Step aside for a commercial break, and we'll come right back here to Richmond. Lady Indians trying to hold on and defeat Great Crossing on WBON TV. What does in transit mean? When you see that on our website at jackburford.com, it means your favorite Chevy is on the way. Call us at 859-623-3350 to reserve it, and we'll keep you updated throughout the entire process. See, it's that easy. Reserve your new Chevy today at jackburford.com. Your vehicle is now in transit. Jake from State Farm, I would like to formally extend my gratitude for the Russell rate on my insurance. Do you mean surprisingly great rates from State Farm? I don't believe in accepting help, but I'll make an exception. Here's the deal, Russell. There's no special rate. These prices are for everyone. Consider our square. I made that from memory. I know your face that well. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Madison Central 7, great crossing for Lady Indians coming back to bat one more time. Looking for some insurance runs before we go to the seventh inning. Michaela Morin will lead off, top of the order, followed up by Hack and Ice in the 1-2-3 for Madison Central. Ogle still on the mound for Great Crossing. And the first pitch to Morin. Taken for ball one. Or strike one, excuse me. Ogle gets the sign and the 0-1. Taken up high now, ball and a strike. Lady Indians with a 7-4 lead. Neither team has scored since the bottom of the fourth. Madison Central just hanging on, trying to close out this victory. That one's hit hard, and right into the glove of the left fielder, a nice catch by Holbrook in left field for the first out of the inning. Madison Central 7, great crossing 4, and now coming to the plate is the left fielder, Hack, who's... Been on base every time she's been to the plate. Driven in a couple of runs tonight. Ogle the pitch and taken for strike one. Hack digs back in the box, the 0-1 delivery, and that one's fouled off behind home plate. Make the count 0-2. No balls, two strikes, Madison Central. With the 7-4 lead over Great Crossing, these two teams again played last year in the first round of the 11th Region Tournament. Great Crossing getting the victory and ending the career of Skylar Jacob, who spoke about that early on in the broadcast tonight. She was on with us for a few minutes. This one grounded hard over to short, and the great defensive shortstop Sullivan able to get it and throw over to first in time for out number two. So two outs in the inning, and that will bring up Hannah Eisen, the first baseman 
as Madison Central looking for some insurance runs here in the bottom of the sixth before Greg Crossing comes up for what could potentially be their final lap out of the ball game. First pitch, a called strike. Oh, and one the count. Ogle the pitch, another foul ball, make it 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. Ogle one strike away from getting her team back up to the plate with a three run deficit. Looking for a 1 2 3 inning. As Hannah Eisen awaits the 0 2 pitch, and she'll foul it off. Count stays 0-2. Ogle gets the ball back, and she is ready to go. Eisen back in the box, squares around, now sets, and takes one right between the shoulder blades. Man. That did not look nice. It did not look like it felt good, Gage, which is why when the ball was up here, I need you to protect me. Ison appears to be okay, kind of walking it off. Maybe lost her breath for a split second, but she's tough. See her and some of her friends every Sunday morning at church. Hannah is a very, very good softball player as well. She, again, hasn't had the power she displayed last year, but... I think she would tell you she would rather take the team success than the season that she had last year with the home run ball. <coughs> Two outs. As the first pitch to Kaler is taken for strike one. Kaler trying to extend the inning. Is a chance to help herself out before she comes back out for the top of the seventh and tries to close out this ball game. The 0 1. Swinging a miss. Kaler way out in front of that one. Make it 0 2. No balls, two strikes. 0 0. Rares back, and the pitch is swung on and missed for strike three as the inning comes to an end. Madison Central will take a three-run lead into the seventh, needing three outs to get the victory. Lady Indians will have Kaler try to close this one out. It'll be Sullivan, Lukadu, and Holbrook due up for great crossing in the seventh inning when we come back on WBON-TV. Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy will help guide you on your road to recovery. It is our mindset, a spirit driven to excellence, to help people heal faster and better. If you have pain or an injury, or you need experts in sports medicine, Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy is your best choice in rehabilitation, and you have direct access. In most cases, you do not need a referral to any of our seven locations serving the region. Just give OSPTKY a call. Visit our website at OSPTKY.com to find the location nearest you. The constant changing of the weather in Kentucky can put a strain on your heating and cooling system. It's times like these when it's good to have someone on your side 24-7. That's Madison HVAC. No matter what you need, Madison HVAC is there from standard heating and air services, indoor air quality, or commercial refrigeration. You can rest easy knowing you're getting the best there is with Madison HVAC. Financing options available. Visit MadisonHVACR.com to learn more or call 859-625-1471. Madison Central three outs away from their 18th win of the season. Lady Indians with Kaler out there to try to close this thing out and get the victory. As it'll be Sullivan, Lukadu, and Holbrook, the 1-2-3 part of the order coming to the plate for the Lady Warhawks of Great Crossing. First pitch, fouled off down the left field line. Just 
Sullivan, such a tremendous softball player. Again, going to be playing her college ball at the University of Kentucky. You've probably heard of that school before. And right there is why, folks. She is so good at that slap hit. The speed to run, and she'll be held up at second base as they get it in quickly into the infield. But a leadoff double for Sullivan, and great crossing puts the first runner aboard in scoring position. To bring up Lukadu, third baseman. Okay, we've got to buckle down and get some outs. The top of the order, up at the plate, always a threat. There's a reason they're in positioned in that spot of the order. Oh, one count as Lukadu awaits the pitch. Kaler sets and delivers, and this one's grounded down the line at third. Oh, and two the count. Here's the 0-2. This one's down the left field line. Hack giving chase, and what a grab! Cassidy Hack. Are you kidding me? Check out this replay, folks. I mean, that is, it's a foul ball. She gives it a chase, and right at the fence, check this out. My goodness. And her dad did not teach her that is what I'm supposed to say, I believe. What an outstanding catch. Her second grab. Like that in the ball game, I mean, tremendous defense by Hack as Madison Central two outs away from the win, but Sullivan did advance up to third on that tremendous catch by Hack in left field. 0-1 the count, still three-run lead. Kaler gets the sign, sets, and delivers. A soft grounder back to her. She'll throw to first in time for the out. Ison will throw home, not in time to get Sullivan. But now you're one out away from the victory as Sullivan makes it 7-5. Lady Indians still with that two-run lead. Bianca Ward will come to the plate. That has the first pitch, taken for a strike. Kaler and Madison Central, two strikes away from the win. The 0-1. Taking out the letters, a ball and a strike. Central still two strikes away with the bases empty from the victory. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Grounded over to Metcalf at short. She'll throw over, and Madison Central picks up their 18th win of the year. Lady Indians started off hot and able to put away great crossing late in this ball game with some tremendous defense all around, but especially from left field and Cassidy Hack. My goodness, two amazing catches by Hack in this win. We'll have a recap of this victory by Madison Central tomorrow on the Live at 5 newscast for WBON-TV. But for us tonight, we will sign it off. A nice win for Kaler and the Lady Indians as they defeat Great Crossing 7-5, to five, your final score. For our, produ our producer, Gage Hill, our cameraman, Dawson Rowe, I'm Michael Watkins, folks. We'll see you next time, which is tomorrow. Madison Southern versus Montgomery County tomorrow on WBON. So we'll see you then on WBON-TV.